Hi, it's Sunday, August 2nd. Welcome to Roncesvalles United Church. I'm wearing my green stole today to remind us all that we're still in the church period of ordinary time. Ordinary time, of course, means ordered. Instead of having a name for this time, like the first week of Advent or the third week of Lent, these weeks are ordered. And usually we're supposed to talk about either the stories of Jesus or the nature of God. That's what we're going to do today. But before we do that, we're going to sing together, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling, and then Lori McIntyre is going to read our scripture. So let's start our time together with Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. Thanks, Anthony. from 1 John verses 5 to 10. God is light. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. Thanks so much for that reading, Lori. That was wonderful. Now, in a minute, Anthony's going to play our special music for today, and he's chosen a piece by Gershwin called A Foggy Day in London Town. There's a good reason for that, and I want to tell you what it is before we hear the music. The passage that Lori read us today is from 1 John in the New Testament. Now, 1 John is different than the Gospel of John, which you find much earlier in the book. 1 John is a series of three tiny little letters that are a little bit confusing. First of all, we don't know who wrote them, which always makes me think if we don't know who wrote them, then why couldn't you call it first George or first Howard or first Edward with the large bulbous red nose? It's always very confusing to have John and then first John. But first John is also a little confusing because it was written not for the usual audience that Jesus was speaking to, which were the Jews, but for Gentiles, and people who are already converted, if we want to say that, to Christianity. It gets confusing because it loops around in the book. It sounds like Hebrew poetry, which just keeps going in a circle over and over and over again. It can all leave you feeling a little, well, foggy. But that's what we're going to talk about today, that foggy feeling created by this book, and what I am calling how did I get here again? Thanks, Anthony, for playing. Thank you. 
today I've been looking through photographs of trips that I've taken because none of us are going very far afield this summer, are we? So I want to share a few of those pictures with you and Sid's going to put them up. Well, there's a fantastic one. Oh, I remember Hawaii so well. Wow, I remember the days when we used to be able to travel. When I look at the ones of Rome, I'm always remembered of one particular story. The first time I went to Rome, I took one of those hop-on, hop-off buses. You know the ones where you get on the bus, they give you a map, you decide which destinations you want to get off at, and you're left at that destination for, you know, 40 minutes or so, and then you get on the bus to go to the next one. Well, when I was in Rome, I really wanted to go to see a cathedral built by the Knights of Malta. And I got my map out, and I sat on the bus, and I got ready to see this. I got off at what I thought was the right spot, and I was strangely at the Circus Maximus. Now, the Circus Maximus is an amazing historic site, so I spent my 40 minutes there, and I got back on the bus. The next day, I took the hop-on, hop-off bus again, planning to go to the same cathedral that I had thought of the day before. I got my number, I was ready to go, I got off the bus, and I was at Circus Maximus again for 40 minutes. I was annoyed for about 30 of those, and then I spent 10 minutes looking around again, and actually it was really interesting. There were things I hadn't seen before. The next day, I was incredibly determined. I had my map. I had the number. I was not going back to the same place. I got on the bus. I got distracted. I got off at the stop, and I was at Circus Maximus again. Well, this time I decided I may as well spend the whole 40 minutes looking for things that I hadn't seen. And sure enough, it turned out that there was lots to visit, even the third time. Now, many of us can relate that feeling to times in our life and situations that we encounter, seemingly again and again and again. We can have that feeling that I've been here before, as we have the same discouraging conversation with our child or with our parent. We can feel like I've been here before when I lose my patience again in a situation that I lost my patience in two or three weeks before. We can have that same feeling when we get in a relationship that's just as bad as the ones we left, get into another dead-end job, or simply find ourselves being discouraged again. It's really easy to feel, I'm never going to get out of this circle, this patterning, this roundabout. In fact, our life can feel a little like the book of First John sounds, just going around and around and around in a circle like they did in Circle Maximus and never getting any further in our troubles. Well, First John has a lot to say about exactly that kind of situation. The people that John was writing to, or whoever the author was, were having the same problems over and over again as new Christians. They were, well, sinning. Now we know that sinning means to miss the mark. So they were trying to live a Christian life, one that they thought meant being patient, open-minded, helpful to others, and they were finding it simply difficult to do. Over and over and over, they were falling short. So the first letter of John that we heard from is largely about the relationship of God, people with God when they make mistakes. Now, I remember years ago, I had an absolute best friend who was probably one of those people that are energy suckers, toxic for me. She complained all the time. She didn't like anything I did. She was continually telling me how I was falling short and how her other friends were falling short too. But for some reason, I believed that loyalty required me to stay in that situation. Well, of course, given the type of person she was, my day finally came. She finally decided that I was dead to her, and that was the end of that friendship. But strangely enough, about six months later, having spent those months going, oh, I'm so glad to be out of that, I partnered in friendship with somebody who was almost exactly the same. I repeated the same behavior. I did the same unhelpful thing. And I found myself thinking, just like I did in Rome, how did I get here again? So I was like the people that John was writing to. 
What the scriptures tell us always is that if we come to the same place again, we are ready to look at it in a new way. And that's so important, isn't it? Instead of saying, how did I get here again? We have an opportunity as people who are awakened in spirit. And that's what John refers to. People who have had the opportunity to awaken to the presence of God and guide and spirit in their lives. We have an opportunity to stop and look at things a little differently. We have an opportunity when we say, how did I get here again, to say to ourselves, okay, if I'm here again, then this is a problem that I'm really meant to pay attention to in my life. In fact, there's been a suggestion made by many mystics that the same problem comes up to us again and again and again in our lives because at each moment we're given a new opportunity to deal with it differently. Okay, so what do we do when we realize that the same thing has come up again? Well, as I just said, we realize that this is obviously speaking to one of our core issues. This is a lesson that we are meant to see and to understand as something that's confronting us regularly in our lives, but also to know that we have spiritual tools given to us at every step of the way. So we can stop and say, what are the spiritual tools that I have learned since the last time this happened that might help me get further? <laughs> what are spiritual tools? Well, of course, the biggest one is asking for help. The biggest spiritual tool we have is saying, God, I don't know how to make this different, but I am willing to learn. Another spiritual tool we have is not taking things personally. That's a big one, too. We can say to ourselves, this issue is about this person's issue, but it's bringing up something in me that I need to look at. So in a way, maybe I can be grateful to them. That's a pretty big tool. Another spiritual tool is to look at how much time we spend berating ourselves instead of really digging into the problem and looking for a spiritual solution to it. There are so many spiritual tools, in fact, and if we're not gathering them, if we find we're at the same place again and we're not ready to see something different, then it's time that we start picking up some books or talking to your pastor or actively asking God into the situation, into the problem, to help us move further. The author of 1 John was saying to his people, listen, you're all going to fall short. You're all going to come up short and you're all going to make mistakes. But you can learn because you're enlightened, because you know that you have help available to you. And isn't that an amazing thing to know? So just as every time I got off that darn hop-on, hop-off bus at Circus Maximus, there was actually something new to experience. Every time a friendship that's the same or a situation that's similar or a conversation that comes up again in the same way happens, I have an opportunity to say, okay, here it is again. What have I been given to help me move through this differently? And if I don't feel I have enough tools to go out and get them, because for sure, if this is my lesson, it's going to come up again. So what do I encourage everyone to do is to look at the thing, times that you say, I've been here before, and realize that while we have, may have been here before, that doesn't mean that we're the same. It doesn't mean that we haven't learned something that might make this time a little different, a little easier. We have learned something that will help us live better with ourselves, with each other, and with our God. And that changes everything. Thanks be to God. So thank you for being here today. Thank you to Lori for the scripture reading, to Anthony for the music, to Sid for the video, and to all of you who are keeping Roncesvalles United Church so happy and healthy. We are grateful for your continued donations. We are continuing to deliver meals to the street, not just tourists is sending their uh, medical supplies around the world. And our partnership group, Toronto Cares, is supporting families in need in Parkdale. So thank you to all of you. We're going to end today with a prayer. Let us pray together. Our God, when we are discouraged because we find ourselves in the same place again, remind us that you are always ready to help us move further. Give us the spiritual tools we need to move through those difficult situations differently the next time. 
Give us the courage and fortitude we need to be reminded that we all fall short and that we are simply here to learn. And it's okay to make a mistake and then make a mistake again. And remind us also that we are always companioned. We are never alone. Our God, we say prayers today for so many people who are in need. I say a prayer for Heather. Give her strength. Keep her strong. I say a prayer today for my mother, Otha Sim. Keep her happy. Keep her healthy. I say a prayer today for everyone else who has said that they are in need of a special blessing. We take a moment. We remember those whose names we hold in our hearts. And our God, we say a prayer for our own lives. Use them to your good and help us to get out of our continual circle of mistakes and move a little further towards the joy that you would have us live in. Amen. And now may the love of God and the grace of our Lord and our guide, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide upon us, everyone, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let's sing, go gently, go lightly. <laughs>